Welcome to Direct Current Deep Dive, exploring the technical framework of Current OS, a MOOC designed to dive into the principles behind Current OS technical decisions and their role in defining the electrical standard for DC microgrids. This video is part two of a six-part series. Explore the remaining videos on the Current OS YouTube channel to continue learning about the world of direct current. In this video, will explain the underlying principles that drive current OS's technical choices on voltages and voltage bands, and we'll discuss interoperability within the DC community worldwide. When it comes to voltage, reaching a consensus is critical to be interoperable. However, consensus often requires compromise. The voltage bands current OS chose represent the result of such compromises among manufacturers. For any given application, such as an electric vehicle charging system, You'll always encounter someone who argues 840 volts would be more optimal than 760, or another who insists, I'd prefer 320 volts. This level of customization works for engineered-to-order solutions where systems are tailored to specific needs. However, it becomes impractical when developing off-the-shelf solutions that must ensure interoperability between products from multiple manufacturers. In these cases, Design offices must be able to assemble components from various brands seamlessly, and this requires alignment on standardized voltage bands. Studies were conducted on different types of loads and voltage bands. One key finding stands out. Most current loads designed for 230 volts AC are actually internally built to handle a maximum constant voltage of 400 volts. As a result, they perform very well around 350 volts DC. Why is that? Many of today's AC loads include internal electronics, and the first thing those electronics do is convert AC to DC. This means their internal nominal voltage is often closer to 350 volts DC than to 230 volts AC. With DC, the loads naturally allow for higher voltage bands. It's not just about optimizing cables. It's the way many existing products are designed. We also see a clear need for higher voltages for more powerful loads, such as EV chargers or heat pumps. These loads require something equivalent to 400 volts three-phase AC, but in a DC system. For even more demanding applications, such as high-power EV charging, think semi-trucks on highways, we observe the need for much higher voltage bands. For example, charging a truck in 45 minutes so the driver can resume their journey for another four hours requires megawatts of power. This might call for 1,400 volts or plus or minus 700 volts DC installations. The takeaway? Different loads demand different voltages. There's an optimum for each application. You wouldn't power your laptop with 1,000 volts, nor would you run a rooftop heat pump on 12 volts. It's about finding the right voltage for each use case, and patterns are starting to emerge. A key point to highlight is the difference in voltage scaling between AC and DC. In AC systems, voltage transitions follow a multiplier of the square root of 3. For example, 230 volts phase to neutral will transition to 400 volts phase to phase, and 400 volts will transition to 690 volts in certain applications. In DC systems, however, voltage jumps are based on a factor of 2. This means transitioning from the pole to midpoint voltage to the pole to pole voltage is achieved by doubling the value. Combining these considerations, a band of voltages below 400 volts is typically used. This band aligns with the design of many loads and also represents the upper safety limit for protecting people. In environments with non-electrical professionals, such as commercial buildings, voltages below 400 volts are utilized. For higher powered applications, the voltage typically doubles. For specific cases requiring significant power, such as specialized industrial or transport applications, the voltage doubles again. However, it is crucial to stay below 1,500 volts, as exceeding this threshold shifts into the medium voltage range. Defining a voltage isn't about agreeing on a single number. It's about defining ranges, or bands as we say. Why talk about voltage bands? First, it's necessary to define a nominal band, the band within which the system operates indefinitely, for example, when we refer to 350 volts, the nominal band might actually be between 320 and 380 volts. This band, often referred to as U2 to U3, defines the standard operating conditions. We also talk about bands because 
With DC, we enter the world of electronics and converters. This introduces the concept of voltage swell. In AC systems, it's well understood that nominal bands can sometimes be exceeded temporarily between U3 and U4, often for a few minutes. These temporary conditions might occur due to events like disconnecting several loads simultaneously or a sudden influx of power. Such conditions are not faults. They're temporary deviations that the system will eventually self-correct. During this time, products need to continue functioning without damage, even as voltage rises up to U4 until the system returns to the nominal band. However, beyond U4, it becomes a fault. At this point, protection devices must activate to prevent damage. Now, because DC systems rely heavily on electronics, there's also a need to define a band where internal clamping systems within devices activate. This band between U5 and U6 must also be standardized across manufacturers. Coordination is critical here. If one large device clamps at 2,000 volts, while a nearby LED driver clamps at 1,000 volts, the smaller device with its limited surge absorbers like MOVs or TVS will absorb all the transients and fail prematurely. Proper coordination is essential to manage these transients effectively and protect all components. These bands, U3 to U4, U5 to U6, represent voltages above nominal. Now let's address what happens when voltages drop below nominal. In a DC microgrid, which is naturally isolated from the public grid by an AC-DC converter, startup poses unique challenges. In AC systems, powering up a building involves carefully managed steps, magnetizing the transformer, progressively energizing circuits, and bringing loads online gradually to avoid tripping protections due to high inrush currents. DC systems require a similar approach, albeit on a smaller scale due to limitations in the nominal power of the AC-DC converter and the available sources. It's necessary to define an initial voltage, U1, to exit a blackout state and allow power sources to begin contributing. From there, the system can work toward reaching the nominal band, U2. Between U1 and U2, certain loads might operate in emergency mode. For instance, safety lighting or fire protection systems. To summarize, defining a voltage is not about agreeing on a single number. It's a spectrum of values that must be carefully defined, particularly when dealing with electronic protection systems. The six key voltage bands to consider are, U1 represents the blackout state and the voltage required for a black start to energize the microgrid. U2 marks the lower limit of the nominal voltage band. U3 defines the upper limit of the nominal voltage band. U4 accounts for the swell, a temporary voltage increase above nominal bands. U5 and U6 outline the range where clamping systems come into play to protect against transient overvoltages. Each of these values plays a critical role in ensuring the stability, safety, and efficiency of a DC microgrid, forming a framework for effective power management and protection. Current OS has defined specific voltage bands these voltage bands have been formalized in an IEC technical report, 63282. When we refer to 700 volts, it corresponds to a nominal band between 640 and 760 volts, with a maximum continuous voltage of 800 volts. Beyond this, there is a band where clamping systems are expected to operate. Another defined system is referred to as 350 volts with a nominal band between 320 and 380 volts and a maximum continuous voltage of 400 volts. While the specification states that the system should not operate between 380 and 400 volts for more than 10 minutes, it essentially means that the equipment is designed to handle 400 volts continuously. It is built with this capability in mind. Beyond this, same logic, there is a band where clamping systems are expected to operate. There is a growing convergence among various consortia regarding voltage bands. These bands are gradually reaching a consensus in the electrical community through collaborations beyond current OS. For instance, current OS and the IEC have agreed on these voltage bands. This concludes the voltage presentation of current OS. Want to learn more? Check out the other five current OS MOOC videos covering an introduction to current OS, power management, electrical protections, pre-charging and earthing. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.